Welcome back to the Living in Sacramento, California channel. I'm Lance Dengate with one of the top relocation teams here in Sacramento. So today we're gonna to be covering the number one presentation if you're thinking about making the move to the greater Sacramento area. Now it is okay to pause the video, go ahead, take some notes. This is gonna be your ultimate guide if you're thinking about moving or relocating to Sacramento, California. We're gonna be covering four major things that you need to know. And the Greater Sacramento Metro can be an awesome place if you're moving to California for the first time or if you're trying to leave the Bay Area or Southern California, but you can definitely move to the wrong area. Now we've lived here our entire life and depending on what your lifestyle is like, where you have to work and what you enjoy doing on your off time, being in the wrong area of town can make your life absolutely miserable. So our goal is to give you as much of our knowledge that we've learned over the years of living here, as well as helping people relocate here and allowing you to learn from our mistakes. So we're gonna be covering four major areas in today's video. The first one that we're gonna cover is gonna be major roads and sections. Now this is gonna determine where you live. Now we live about 15 to 20 minutes away from a major highway and we're about 35 minutes away from downtown Sacramento. So this is gonna be super important if you have to do any type of commuting for work or you have to make several trips down to Sacramento for whatever reason. Now this is the most important thing when determining the area that you're gonna live. It doesn't make sense to go look at any houses or do anything else until you've determined the exact area that you're relocating here for. That way you have a good sense of the area and where you wanna live. So this is gonna determine where you wanna live. Now next, we're gonna talk about best areas to live based off of niche.com in Sacramento, California. So we're gonna use their list. I'm not allowed to steer you in any way, but we're gonna look at their list and compare it to the map and show you where these areas are in location to or related to downtown Sacramento and all the things to do. Now, once we start going through this, it's gonna allow you to start ruling areas out. So if you know what you like, we can always start to figure out the best areas based off of that. But if you're having a hard time figuring out what you like, we can also do this from the reverse and figuring out what you don't like so we can also start to rule areas out. Now, as we're talking about each one of these areas, we're also gonna cover some of the pros and cons of some of these areas and why you might like living in certain areas over others. And then we're gonna finish off with cost of living. So now we're gonna jump into the map here. And the first thing that we're gonna cover is kind of Sacramento as a whole just giving you kind of a lay of the land, figuring out where everything's at, and then we'll start to dive into some of these areas as well. So as you can see on the map, you're gonna have Sacramento, and that's gonna be directly in the center. So you're gonna have this red border that you're gonna see right around downtown Sacramento, and this is going to be the main hub as it relates to where people are coming from. It's the capital of California, and that's gonna be where a lot of different things happen. You're gonna have Downtown Sacramento, you're gonna have certain areas around downtown Sacramento that are gonna be neighborhoods, but right here in this small little section is gonna be downtown Sacramento. You're gonna see that there's gonna be Golden One Center down there, there's gonna be all of your bars, there's gonna be your restaurants, all of the really happening things that are gonna happen in downtown Sacramento. Then from there, as we start to determine the areas that you wanna live in, right, you're gonna notice that all of these different freeways are going to come into downtown Sacramento from, you've got Interstate 80 that's going to come down here from uh, East uh, North, uh, North Lake Tahoe, Rockland, Loomis, Roseville area. You're gonna have Highway 50 that's gonna come from the East as well. It's gonna be Shingle Springs, Placerville, El Dorado Hills, Folsom. Then you're gonna have Highway 16. This is gonna be a little bit more rural, but that's gonna come from Rancho Murrieta. Then you're gonna have Highway 99. That's gonna be kind of from your San Joaquin Valley area, your Stockton, Lodi. Um, same thing for I-5. That's gonna be on the uh, other side of the San Joaquin Valley, Stockton, Elk Grove area. Then you're gonna have Interstate 80. That's gonna come up here from San Francisco, passing through Davis. And then you're gonna have Interstate 5, which is gonna come from the Woodland area, and then Interstate 99, which is gonna come from North. You're also gonna have the Sacramento International Airport that's gonna be right here. And so you're gonna see that Sacramento is gonna be the center of everything as it relates to the map. And you're gonna have all these different veins that are gonna be coming off of it as it relates to your different freeways or your different major freeways and everything's gonna converge on downtown Sacramento. So when we start looking at this, we zoom in a little bit, you're gonna have, you know, your, pretty, your main freeways that you're going to be utilizing if you're relocating to the downtown Sacramento area is gonna be Interstate 80, Interstate 50, Interstate 99, Interstate 5, Interstate 80 coming from the west, and then you're gonna have pretty much 99 and 5 that are gonna merge 
down from the airport and north, right? So those are gonna be your major freeways. Everything is going to come into the downtown Sacramento area. And the nice thing about California or the nice thing about the area of Sacramento is we don't have a lot of tollways. So I've seen videos where other people are talking about different belts and different loops around certain cities. And even in Southern California, you're gonna have some tollways. The cool thing about Sacramento, we don't have any tollways. So there's really no particular benefit of using one freeway over the other. Now certain freeways are going to be a little bit more enjoyable if you're going to have to be making that commute down to downtown Sacramento, but it doesn't really matter where you're coming from in some of these locations or some of these suburb areas, but some are going to have more traffic than others depending on where you have to go if you're having to commute to downtown Sacramento for work. Now the tough thing about this is in other cities you'll see these kind of belt loops around uh, downtown Sacramento or around the area that allows you to get from one section to the other. So that's where probably Sacramento is a little bit more lacking as it relates to their freeway system is depending on where you're coming from, we don't really have a loop that takes you all the way around the perimeter. That is a fast way to get around town and get you to certain areas depending on where you need to be from. So, you know, being that it may, if you have to go from the Roseville area and you have to go over to Folsom, you are taking back roads and streets to get over to Folsom, right? Um, that's kind of one of the, the negatives about Sacramento that I don't personally like, especially as I uh, visit some of these other areas and see some of these transportation systems that are pretty, uh, some of these transportation systems that are very uh, established in other cities is we don't have that belt loop that's going to take you from one area of town to the other. So you pretty much have to go down into downtown Sacramento if you're trying to go back up the other 50 way or you're gonna have to kind of cut through back roads to get down from like a Roseville or Rockland to Folsom. They are starting to put more infrastructure as it relates to like crosstown freeways, but as of right now, we don't really have it. Now, the biggest question that you're going to have to ask yourself is depending on where you're wanting to live at, you know, as you can see, there's really not too much as it relates to west of Sacramento. So there's going to be one town that we're gonna to touch on, which is gonna be Davis over here. But for the most part, everything in downtown Sacramento is going to be your main like backstop. And then everything else is going to go up towards North Lake Tahoe or South Lake Tahoe, depending on which freeway. So that's gonna be one of the main factors that you're gonna to have to consider is, do you have to be or commute down into downtown Sacramento? And how close do you want to be, right? You've got this pocket of Sacramento that's gonna be kind of like that North Natomas area. You're gonna have other parts of Sacramento County that are gonna be kind of right on that border. You're gonna have uh, the pocket down here. We've done a video on that, which a vlog tour. And then you're gonna have certain areas of like Southland Park. You're gonna have ESAC that's gonna be over here towards Sacramento State University. And that's where it's really gonna depend on, do you have to be locational to downtown Sacramento? or are you willing to be a little bit further out as it relates to some of the commutes? So that's where certain people will start to evaluate, you know, do they wanna be out here in Roseville or Rockland or Loomis or Folsom, Fair Oaks? So there's gonna be certain distances that are gonna be a little bit easier depending on how close you wanna to be to a freeway and how fast do you wanna get downtown Sacramento. Now that we have an understanding of some of the major roadways, then you can start to determine you know, how far out away from the greater Sacramento area you're wanting to be at. Do you need to be super close to downtown Sacramento? Or are you wanting to have a less than a 10 or 15 minute commute? And you're gonna to try to stay within these boundary lines as it relates to the main part of Sacramento City? Are you open to you know, be, maybe being in a portion of you know, Sacramento County or that's still incorporated by Sacramento County, but it's outside of the city limits? Or are you willing to go a little bit further out and maybe be in parts of Placer County or El Dorado County, um, be a little bit closer to the foothills, be a little bit closer to like Folsom Lake, other things like that as well too. So now that we've talked about some of the major roadways as it relates to Sacramento, now we're gonna talk, start talking about some of these major areas as it relates to niche.com. So we're gonna start off at the bottom, go all the way up to the top. This isn't in any particular order on the map. This is just how they have them ranked based off of their list. Now coming in at number 10 is going to be Elk Grove. So Elk Grove is gonna be located here in the south. It's going to pretty much border up to the Sac River over here on the left side. You're gonna see kind of an informal line that's gonna come down here to the bottom. It's going to go out towards Wilton. 
and then it's gonna come back right around the vineyard area and it's gonna kind of bubble around this section of Sacramento. So Elk Grove is gonna be located on the furthest part south of Sacramento County before you start getting into like the Lodi, Stockton area, San Joaquin down Highway 99, Interstate 5. Now the cool thing about this area is a lot of people love coming to Elk Grove because you've got a quick trip. It's only gonna be about a 15, maybe a 25 minute drive up Highway 99 or up Highway 5, and that's gonna get you into downtown Sacramento. You can also take Highway 99 or Highway 5 south, and that's gonna be a quicker drive if you have to get back down to the Bay Area on the backside, maybe through Highway 12 or 580, and you've got people or family in the, in the East Bay area that you still gotta go down to. So Elk Grove is gonna be similar to some other areas in Sacramento as it relates to amenities. You're gonna have you know, lots of parks, you're gonna have residential neighborhoods that are gonna go from uh, your you know, more older cute cottage to one, three, one bungalow houses. You're gonna have some new construction that's gonna be down here towards the south. You're gonna have um, one of our favorite communities is gonna be right here. It's going to be uh, Laguna West. We've done a couple of videos there where we've showed you some of the man-made lakes. We've shown you some of the, the developments there. So those are some pretty cool things. You're gonna have a casino that's down here. So if you wanna go gambling or if you wanna do any of that stuff, you're gonna have the brand new Sky River Casino. But overall, Elk Grove is gonna have you know, housing that's going to relate to every type of buyer. Um, you're gonna be close to a lot of different amenities, shopping, grocery stores, um, all of your ba basic necessities are gonna be within Elk Grove that you're really never gonna have to leave for. Now, jumping into one of our other great suburbs is gonna be Fair Oaks. Now, uh, we moved to Fair Oaks when I was probably a freshman in high school. Um, it's a cute little town, it's pretty close. You've got easy access to Interstate 80. Um, if you go down, um, there's a road here called Madison Avenue that'll take you to Interstate 80. You've got uh, Greenback that'll take you over to Interstate 80, or you can head down uh, Sunrise Boulevard and that'll take you to Interstate 50. So pretty close, you're still in Sacramento County. Um, Elk, Fair Oaks is gonna be a little bit more of like a, a town. It's not gonna really have an established city government or it's not gonna have some of those other amenities. It's usually gonna share off of different amenities from like Citrus Heights or Folsom, but you still have grocery stores, you still have great high schools, you still have great schooling. One of the really popular things about Fair Oaks is you're super close to the American River, which is this river that's gonna run along the south border of a lot of things in Sacramento County. It's pretty much gonna run parallel to Interstate or Highway 50, but this area of town is gonna be super nice. It's gonna be a little bit more established. You're gonna have homes that are gonna be, you know, built in the 50s, 60s, 70s, um, maybe even some in the 80s, you're gonna have larger lots over in this area of town. You're gonna have things that can be, you know, you have your traditional, you know, six, seven, 8,000 square foot lots. You can also find lots over in Fair Oaks that are gonna be on a third of an acre or half an acre lot. So there's gonna be a lot of diversity here. There's gonna be a lot of really cute little restaurants that are gonna be located in Fair Oaks that you can check out. Um, and it's really not that far away from downtown Sacramento. So if you have to do commuting, so Fair Oaks tends to be a really good place that a lot of people tend to move to if they have to make that commute. There's a couple of different ways to get there. I know when I worked in downtown Sacramento, there'd be some times where I'd come up 50. There'd be some times where I'd go down and in, uh, down into Sacramento and down up Highway 80 if I wanted to get there. But um, Fair Oaks is another one of those areas that has really good school districts. It's gonna be a little bit more residential. You're gonna have you know, local bars, really good eateries that are gonna be there. Um, but it's gonna be a little bit quieter as it relates to some other parts of downtown Sacramento. Now, next on our list is going to be Rancho Murrieta. Now, Rancho Murrieta is gonna be a city that is not one that pops up on a lot of people's radars because it's pretty far out from downtown Sacramento. So Highway 16, it looks like a normal highway, but this highway takes you all the way up into Amador County. There's some really good winery places up here, but Rancho Murrieta is gonna be a little city that's gonna be located off of Highway 16, just out past Slough House. Rancho Murrieta is gonna be a, an area or a city that is definitely much more rural. A lot of equestrian properties out here. There is a small community that's kind of around a golf course out here that's pretty popular, but for the most part, the city is gonna be very limited. I think up until maybe like two or three years ago, maybe five years ago, it's been a while since I've been out there, but Rancho Murrieta didn't used to have a lot of things out there. You would kind of blink, you'd pass by it as you were going up towards Jackson or Ione or any of the places that are kind of up in wine country. And they didn't even have, they had like maybe a, a gas station or two, but they didn't really have a grocery store. They didn't have any kind of, 
stopping or hotels or anything out there. Since then, it's grown a little bit. They've got some more uh, developmental things out there. But this is a super cute community. Um, there's a private country club that's out here that a lot of people belong to members. There's a gated community out here. And then you're gonna have a lot of opportunity for kind of like ranch rural properties that are gonna be you know, in this vicinity of kind of that Slough House, Wilton, uh, Rancho Murrieta area. But Rancho Murrieta is gonna be one of those places that comes in at number eight. It's definitely a smaller community. So Highway 16 is gonna be that main road that gets you to Highway 50 and right into downtown Sacramento. Now the next city that we're gonna cover on our list based off of the niche.com is going to be Roseville. So Roseville is going to be located, I would say it's gonna be located anywhere between 25 to 30 minutes away from downtown Sacramento. You're gonna have Interstate 80 that's gonna run up towards Roseville. Now Roseville is going to be expanding uh, massively. Right? We've done a ton of videos on Roseville. Roseville is where we currently live. Um, but Roseville is gonna to border to Sacramento County. It's gonna to border to Rockland, Granite Bay. And it's gonna be kind of that like informal line that's gonna be located on the map. Now, Roseville is gonna be the third largest city behind Sacramento and Elk Grove. It's going to have a lot of different uh, amenities. It's going to have a lot of shopping. Roseville is known as a regional destination area for shopping. It's going to have a lot of really good restaurants. It's going to have, you know, population wise, it's going to be right there behind Elk Grove as it relates to the amount of people who move or relocate to the area. And the nice thing about Roseville is that you're going to have a ton of different housing, housing options. So Roseville and Elk Grove are probably going to be you know, outside of Sacramento County, Roseville and Elk Grove are gonna probably have the best entry points as it relates to getting into some of these areas um, that we'll have on our list as it relates to uh, niche.com. So in Roseville and Elk Grove, you're gonna find houses that can start, you know, anywhere in the low 400s and they can definitely go up from there, but you're gonna have the widest variety as it relates to entry level homes. You're gonna have new construction homes, a lot of Elk Grove, has new construction homes towards the south and same thing for Roseville. So in this line of uh, you know, West Roseville, you're gonna have a ton of your, your new construction homes that are gonna be out there. And then you're gonna have some more established neighborhoods over here in East Roseville. And then you're gonna have really all of your main shopping, th fun things to do, Top Golf, uh, Golfland Sunsplash, a lot of things that you can do in Roseville that's gonna be a, an awesome area to live. It's gonna be a pretty quick commute, I would say. Like if you're living in Roseville, it's not gonna be super bad if you have to get into downtown Sacramento. Probably gonna be anywhere between 25 and 45 minutes. It just depends if you are starting to get a little bit further out into some of the new construction areas that are gonna be out here. Um, you either have one of two options where you can either you know, cut across town to get to Highway 65 that's gonna be your main freeway that's gonna get you down into Interstate 80. There is a lot of congestion that's gonna be on this, uh, this freeway. A lot of people are also starting to take these back roads. So these are just two lane back roads that you can take all the way into Interstate 99 and you can drop into Sacramento from the back way. So just depending on how far out in West Roseville that you're living, um, traffic from this area of town is going to be a little bit more congested. It's gonna be a little bit more of a pain, but if you're you know, more or less in the central Roseville area or even East Roseville area, you can hit Interstate 80, probably be a 10 minute drive from certain parts of central Roseville or East Roseville to get back to the freeway. And then you can hit that down and hit your uh, 25 minute commute down to downtown Sacramento. Number six on our list is going to be Rockland. Rockland's gonna be located right off of Interstate 80. You're gonna have parts of Rockland that are also gonna border Highway 65. And so this is pretty much gonna be, you know, Rockland for the most part. Uh, it's gonna border and share a lot of the same amenities that Roseville has. It's gonna have a lot of really good school districts here. You have two high schools, you have Whitney High School and Rockland High School. Both of those are usually rated anywhere between an eight to a 10 out of 10 most of the years. Um, I know a lot of the school ratings have been getting bumped up these last couple of years now that people have been back in the routine since the pandemic, but. Rockland's gonna have a lot of residential neighborhoods. They're gonna have a lot of really good new construction that's gonna be happening kind of in this Whitney Ranch area. So you're gonna have two separate zip codes that are gonna separate East Rockland and West Rockland. West Rockland is gonna be all that stuff that borders Highway 65. 
gonna be a little bit newer construction. It's gonna have a little bit newer of a feel, uh, newer parks, newer things like that. East Rockland is gonna have a little bit older of a feel. Um, the difference or the benefit between the two, East Rockland is gonna probably have a little bit bigger lots. Um, there's some lots in East Rockland where you can have anywhere between a quarter of an acre to a half an acre, whereas West Rockland is gonna be a little bit more condensed, a little bit more newer constructions. Every once in a while you'll still find a property that was you know built on a cul-de-sac lot or something like that but for the most part rockland's going to be primarily residential you're going to have this one main street that's going to run through rockland that's going to be sunset and everything as it relates to your shopping your grocery stores your amenities different things like that are going to be located on the south side towards the freeway most of your residential is going to be north of sunset and then you're going to have a golf course back here but for the most part rockland is going to be you know suburban you're gonna have lots of parks, you're gonna have lots of residential communities, you're gonna have some new construction, you're gonna have some existing stuff that's been built over the years. You're gonna have a couple of things that they're getting ready to build. They are getting ready to build a Costco that's gonna kind of border over here between Loomis, so that should alleviate some of the pressure of the Costco that's located right off of 65 and Galleria Boulevard. So that's gonna be really nice, that's gonna be a benefit. We didn't mention it, but they are building another Costco out there in West Roseville as well. So both of those two Costcos should alleviate some of the pressure and some of that, the you know demand at that one Costco. But they are building a new Costco. They've got a bunch of new stores and new shopping that's gonna be located right off of Sierra College Boulevard. They're gonna have a Bass Pro Shop, they have a Trader Joe's out there, Target, Studio Movie Grill, um, bunch of awesome good shopping that's gonna be out there as well. And it's gonna be bordered right on that Rockland Loomis border. So definitely another really popular area of town that people tend to go to, mainly because of the school districts, but it's definitely an awesome area to live. Great for uh, people who are relocating here that will still want a great public education. Rockland is gonna be one of the top four areas on this list that you're gonna have public school districts that are gonna be in the eights, nines, and the tens. Now the next area on our list, um, based off of the, the list of niche.com is gonna be Eldorado Hills. Now Eldorado Hills is gonna be coming in at number five and it's gonna be located primarily off of Highway 50. You're gonna border, parts of Eldorado Hill are gonna border Folsom Lake. You're gonna border uh, Folsom and then you're also gonna border a town called Cameron Park up here. So you're gonna be starting to get into that little part of the foothills. The cool thing about El Dorado Hills is that you're still not in the fire line or the line that's gonna require um, heavy fire insurance. Every property is a little bit different, but you're still close enough to Folsom to where you're gonna experience some of the amenities. You've got the Palladio, you've got a Lifetime Fitness. There's also a Costco that's down here in Folsom. But the nice thing about El Dorado Hills, again, primarily gonna be residential. There are gonna be some pockets up here that are gonna be, uh, you know, like you've got the Eldorado Hills Town Center that's gonna be located right here off of Latrobe Road. You're gonna have, um, there they're gonna have like a movie theater, they're gonna have a nugget, they're gonna have this giant, um, you've seen us do videos where we've done pros and cons or living in Eldorado Hills where they've got this massive town center. They do a ton of different events. There's like a couple different ponds. There's a target over there, um, but that's going to be one of your main areas. There's going to be a couple of shopping centers that are going to be a little bit closer to the lake for some of the older parts of Eldorado Hills. You're going to have a really good public high school here called Oak Ridge. Um, they're usually rated at eight, nine or 10 out of 10, really good athletic program. And then south of Highway 50, you're starting to see you know, some newer construction areas. So there is some, there is still a lot of newer construction areas that are happening. And then if you want something that's a little bit more higher end over off of, you've got Serrano Parkway, kind of right around in this area of El Dorado Hills, you're gonna have uh, the gated community of Serrano. So Serrano is gonna have a guard gated part and they're also gonna have just a gated community there's gonna be you know, probably three or 4,000 homes that are gonna be built up here. There's some spec homes that are still getting built up there. They've got a private country club. They've got a private golf course that's up there that's really nice. So El Dorado Hills tends to be another one of those areas that's pretty popular for people that are coming or moving to the greater Sacramento area. Um, you're gonna be a little bit further out here though. So this drive down Highway 50, now depending on what part of El Dorado Hills that you are, part of El Dorado Hills goes on both sides of the freeway right here, but depending on what part of El Dorado Hills that you're from or where you're, where you're just choosing to live from, you may have about a 10 to 15 minute drive to get back to Highway 50, and then you're gonna have probably about a 45 minute to an hour drive to get back into downtown Sacramento. So some people who live in El Dorado Hills, they either work remote, they have gotten a job at like maybe one of the 
popular places to get a job in Folsom, which is gonna be like Intel, you've got California Department of Corrections that's in there as well. But maybe you're not trying to commute all the way down to downtown Sacramento, or if you do, maybe it's only like on a, you know, once a week or once a month type of basis, but usually you're gonna be about a 40, 45 minute commute out. You're gonna have some high-end luxury homes out here. You're gonna have some new construction homes. Price point in El Dorado Hills is gonna to start to get you know, above the median average for the greater Sacramento Metro. But the nice thing about being out here in El Dorado Hills is that you're gonna be on this borderline of the foothills. So a lot of people who love El Dorado Hills, they usually will go up to Placerville. You've got Apple Hill up here, which is super fun to go to in the fall. You're a quicker drive to get up to Interstate 50 if you wanna to go to South Lake Tahoe, which is gonna be probably more of your like fun party side. You got a lot more casinos on the South Shore. You've got a lot more of, uh, you know, the different concerts that happen up there. Gambling, snowboarding, skiing, all of that stuff. And then you're pretty close to Folsom Lake. So you've got one of the entrances to Folsom Lake that's gonna be on the Green Valley Road side of El Dorado Hills. Um, a lot of people love to go out there, go boating, go fishing, go do all of that stuff. Um, but you're, you have access to the Sierra Nevada mountain range, which is one of the most popular mountain ranges for hiking, biking, mountain biking, hunting, whatever you like to do in California as it relates to those outdoor activities. You're gonna be closest in El Dorado Hills to some of those things, but you're gonna be a little bit further away from downtown Sacramento. Now, moving on to our number four is gonna be Granite Bay. Now, you can't really see it here on the map, but Granite Bay is gonna be located really on this western side of Folsom Lake. It's gonna butt up to parts of Orangeville, Folsom, and kind of East Roseville, and it's gonna be that section. Now, Granite Bay tends to be where we find most of our luxury listings in the greater Sacramento area. There are some in Folsom, there are some in El Dorado Hills, and, and as you get up towards Folsom Auburn Boulevard, as you go up towards Auburn, kind of the back roadway, but Granite Bay is gonna have a couple of different luxury communities. You're gonna have Wexford, you're gonna have Los Lagos, you're gonna have Wedgwood. Um, you're gonna be really close to the Douglas entrance or the Granite Bay side of Folsom Lake. So there's gonna be a lot of cool things about Granite Bay that a lot of people really love. Now, one of the things that a lot of people love about Granite Bay, or one of the main reasons why a ton of people tend to move to this area of the greater Sacramento is the school district. So from elementary all the way up to high school, you're gonna have usually nine out of tens, 10 out of tens, all the way from elementary, all the way up to the high school, which is gonna be Granite Bay High School. So they do a really good job making sure that their testing scores are really good, that the teachers are super involved, parents are super involved. So it's a really good tight knit community as it relates to public schools. A lot of people will use resources like greatschools.com or they'll use YouTube videos like this to get an understanding for that. So I guess one of the cons to Granite Bay is gonna be that the entry point is gonna be significantly higher than the than the average for moving to the greater Sacramento area. So you can still find really good homes and really good school districts in Rockland, El Dorado Hills, Roseville, Elk Grove, all these areas that we've been touching on up until this point have all been really good school districts, but you can also have a really good entry point if you're a first time home buyer, or if you're somebody that's just getting into it. Granite Bay, the entry point's gonna be a lot higher to get into those neighborhoods. So you're looking at somewhere between, you know, starting in the low sevens, maybe the mid sevens, and they're gonna go up north of two, three, four million, just depending on what you're looking for, where you wanna live at, how close you wanna be, do you wanna be on a golf course, all of those different things. So Granite Bay's been known for some of the more high-end luxury living, like I said, Wexford, Los Lagos, those were places that like people like Eddie Murphy used to live in back in the 90s. Guy got some swimming trunks in the bedroom, dive in the pool, come on, in the pool. Party time! Some of the Kings players used to live in Los Lagos, so that's kind of where Granite Bay was known for a lot of that stuff, but ultimately, you're gonna have really good public schools in Granite Bay. The overall town itself, there's not gonna be a ton of stuff to do here. If you like to go to Folsom Lake, that's always gonna be an option, but outside of Folsom Lake, it's gonna be you know some of your local chain, local restaurants, um, and then you're gonna share a lot of the different amenities that are gonna be in Roseville, or if you're gonna you know go to a Kings game or something, you're gonna go down to downtown Sacramento. Now from Granite Bay, you are probably in the worst position for getting to a freeway. So right here, you've either gotta take this entire strip all the way down Douglas to Interstate 80, or you've gotta take Folsom Auburn Road all the way to Interstate 50. So you're probably in the worst position for freeway access if you've gotta commute down to downtown Sacramento. So keep that in mind. That's probably um, from Granite Bay to Interstate 50. It's probably about a 20 to 25 minute drive. 
And I would say it's probably still about a 20 minute drive if you have to go from the end of Douglas and Folsom Auburn all the way out to Interstate 80. So both of those things keep in mind once you get onto those freeways, 50 is gonna probably have a little bit more congestion than 80, but you're still looking at an additional 25 to 35 minute drive from you know Folsom Auburn and Douglas Boulevard out by the lake. Now jumping into our third area that's gonna be located on niche.com of best suburbs to live outside of Sacramento is gonna be Folsom. Now Folsom is gonna be closer to the Highway 50 side. It's going to border up to parts of Granite Bay that we talked about. You're gonna have the north side that's gonna to border to Folsom Lake. You're gonna have uh, the east side bordering to El Dorado Hills. And then now you've, you're gonna have all this new construction development that's gonna be kind of located south of Highway 50. So Folsom is definitely growing. It's another one of those communities that's in pretty high demand as it relates to the housing market. We didn't really see too much of the housing market take a, a step back or a blip during these last interest rate hike that we saw over 2022 and in, in the first part of 2023. But Folsom is gonna be one of those areas. They have two high schools, they're getting ready to build a third, but it's just growing massively, right? So this new project south of Highway 50 is where all the new construction was going. Um, you've got areas down in south of Highway 50 like Folsom Ranch or Russell Ranch. You've already got the elementary school out there right now, but you're gonna have a brand new middle school, Folsom Ranch Middle School, and a brand new high school, Folsom Ranch High School. Now, Folsom is going to have a little bit different of a topography than most of these other areas. So you've got Folsom Lake that's gonna be on one side, great for outdoor enthusiasts, people who like to boat, people who like to you know, go hiking around Folsom Lake. You're also gonna have Lake Natoma, which is gonna be another lake that's going to feed from the bottom of Folsom Lake, and it's gonna start the American River here at Hazel and uh, 50. But you have a lot of different outdoor activities that are gonna revolve around water, and then you're also gonna have a lot of different trails. Um, but Folsom really has a high demand for its housing. About 20 years ago, Intel came into Folsom, and they've helped maintain a high demand for the housing there. And then you've also got two of a pretty, I would say you've got two pretty popular uh, California Department of State Correctional Facilities that are located in Folsom. And I know that sounds super weird to say, but when you look at all of the California Department of Correction facilities over the state of California, Folsom tends to be the best area as it relates to kind of that work-life balance for a state job or a state employee worker, right? Now, Folsom has a lot of really good employment in the city of Folsom. Like we said, we ha you have Intel, there's Kikaman, there's a, a safe credit union call center that's gonna be over here. So there's gonna be a lot of good job opportunity and employment that's gonna be in Folsom. It is a little bit smaller in comparison to your other areas like Roseville or El Grove, but it's growing, it's starting to be one of the more competitive areas in relationship to city size and population size, and it continues to grow and grow and grow. And especially with all these new homes, I think there's supposed to be between four and 10,000 homes that are gonna be built on this south of Highway 50 side. So it's gonna take a little bit for infrastructure right now since they don't have the high school or the elementary school built. Your student's gonna be going to Vista Del Lago, which is gonna be across, but You've also got two really good public high schools, which is gonna be Folsom High School and the original. And then you're gonna have the new Vista Del Lago. Both of them are rated 10 out of 10s right now as well too. And usually between Folsom and Granite Bay, those are gonna be your two main areas as it relates to the best public schools in the greater Sacramento area before you go private and you choose a place like Jesuit or St. Francis. Now moving on to our number two suburb before we get into the top one for the greater Sacramento area based off of niche.com is gonna be Gold River. Now Gold River is gonna be located down here towards the bottom. It's gonna be located near Fair Oaks. Now this is gonna, definitely gonna be a smaller community. It's gonna be similar to that of like Rancho Marietta. Um, it borders parts of Rancho Cordova, it borders parts of Fair Oaks, parts of Orangevale, um, and it's pretty much gonna be north of that Highway 50 mark. So it's really gonna be this stuff on the east side of uh, Sunrise, uh, about to Hazel, and it's gonna kind of border the uh, American River and Sacramento River. So there's not gonna be a ton of things that are gonna be in this area. You're gonna have a country club that's back there. You're gonna have a lot of, uh, there's not gonna be a ton of things that's back there. You're gonna have um, you know, some housing that's gonna be on the east side of uh, Sunrise Boulevard. And you're gonna have a couple of grocery stores and a couple of restaurants. So for the most part, Gold River is gonna be pretty quiet. Um, I will say you do have really good access. So this is gonna be probably about a five or a 10 minute drive just to get onto Highway 50. 
And then if you gotta go into downtown Sacramento, it's gonna be pretty easy there. Um, no schools that are gonna be really located directly in this area. You're gonna have a school in Rancho Cordova. You're gonna have some schools in Orangeville and Fair Oaks, but there's not gonna be too much as it relates to Gold River. You do have a pretty cool access. Um, they do have the uh, entrance to like a river rafting place that takes you down the American River. That's always been pretty fun or a fun thing to do, but for the most part, Gold River is gonna be pretty quiet and it's gonna be pretty, uh, pretty low key from that perspective. Not a ton of stuff to do in Gold River, but something to keep in mind. Now the top suburb that we're gonna talk about based off of the list on niche.com, and it's gonna be on the complete opposite side of everything that we've been talking about is gonna be Davis. Now Davis is gonna be located on the west side of Sacramento. It's gonna be about a 10 to 15 minute drive that's gonna be from downtown Sacramento down Interstate 80 as you're going towards San Francisco or uh, if you're looking at it the other opposite direction, you're gonna hit Davis before you make it to Sacramento. You're gonna have a causeway that's gonna be right here that's gonna be on both sides. It's gonna go over a bunch of agriculture and farmland, but Davis is gonna be about nine, maybe nine to 10 square miles. It's not gonna be very big. It's a smaller town. Primarily, a lot of people are gonna know Davis for UC Davis College. It's gonna be one of the top colleges in the nation as it relates to like agriculture, veterinary science. Um, but most of the draw to Davis is gonna be from that college. Um, so you're gonna have about, like I said, you're gonna have about nine square miles as it relates to Davis. Um, you're gonna have the college, you're gonna have high schools. Everything's gonna be top public rated. The draw for Davis is gonna be primarily UC Davis. So I wanna say about 50 to 60% of the residents of Davis are gonna be college students. So keep that in mind. It's definitely gonna have a different feel than any of the other suburbs that we talked about that's gonna be located towards you know, Interstate 50. Sometimes people will choose to live in Davis if they have to make the commute all the way down to uh, San Francisco maybe every other week. You have a lot of college professors that live in Davis, or if you still gotta make the drive into downtown Sacramento, it's gonna be about a 10 to 15 minute commute. You do have the causeway. So the one thing about Davis that we hate about Davis, and it's, it's a major con, is gonna be the traffic. So usually this causeway starts to bottleneck all the traffic that has to go into downtown Sacramento. Um, and usually before you ever get into Davis, you know, you can start seeing the traffic start to back up well on the other side of Davis. So that's gonna be one of the negatives to Davis is commuting wise, if you do have to go back into downtown Sacramento, it's not gonna be very convenient for you. Um, you are still pretty close. If you gotta go to the Sacramento airport, you can bump up highway 13 and down five and you can make it to the Sacramento airport for the most part. But you know, Davis isn't gonna be your most convenient area if you wanna live in Sacramento. It is very popular for the college, it's very popular for its public schools and its type of living, but the prices are gonna be driven up a little bit higher here because of that demand. You're gonna have a lot of people that wanna come in, they wanna purchase rental properties, they wanna to try to uh, capitalize on the fact that you have a lot of college students that are constantly turning over year after year after year, but it's a good town for being close and if your student is going to Davis, you know, living in any one of these other areas that we talked about, you know, Folsom, we've had a couple of people who have moved up to this area, their kids are getting ready to go to UC Davis and they wanna be close, but they don't wanna be in Davis. Your price point's gonna be a little bit higher here, but for the most part, Davis is gonna have a much higher entry point because of that demand for the rental properties. So keep that in mind. Now we just covered the best areas to live in the greater Sacramento area based off of a list on niche.com. And the last thing that we told you that we would talk about would be a cost of living. So we did just do a brand new updated cost of living for Sacramento, California that you can check out at this video here. Make sure you go ahead and click that video, watch that video, get all the details as it relates to some of the updated numbers. Um, we use different resources called bestplacestolive.net and they have Sacramento in comparison to national averages and the California average so you can see how Sacramento stacks up. But if you're still wanting to get more information about what it looks like to relocate to the greater Sacramento area, this is where we tell you to, hey, give us a phone call, shoot us a text, or send us that email. The phone number should be popping back up. The biggest thing that we can help do for you is we can get on a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call where we can start going over your goals, figure out what your lifestyle is, and we can start ruling out some of these areas as it relates to places that you absolutely just do not wanna live. So that way we can figure out the right areas for you and you can start putting together your game plan and figuring out what's gonna make it most easy for you to get to the greater Sacramento area with the least amount of headache. So that phone number, like I said, should be popping back up. We are one of the top relocation teams in the greater Sacramento area. So give us a call, shoot us a text, 
or send us that email so that way we can help put together a game plan that's gonna be right for you in making the move to the greater Sacramento area. Yeah.